Welcome back to another content advent calendar video. Thank you once again for joining me at this festive time of year. Today we're diving into Photoshop. We're going to edit a photo, a night sky landscape, but we're going to fake it a little bit. So we're going to take two different photos, one which was taken in the daytime and then one obviously was taken in the nighttime, put them together and create a nice night sky landscape. Now I really like doing this to be honest because it can be difficult to get a really nice night sky landscape, especially in one exposure. And oftentimes you'll do multiple exposures, one for the sky, one for the actual landscape, put them together in post. But sometimes it's nice to play around and actually take a different landscape especially the one we're going to work with, which is taking on a very grey day, and then actually add that in with a night sky photo that you've taken separately. So I love going out and taking night sky photos. I'm very lucky I live close to Beachy Head on the South Downs, which is a great spot to go and take those Milky Way photos or just general night sky photos. And then I can use those with, and this was also taken on Beachy Head, another landscape, which is what we're going to do. So let's dive into Photoshop and let's look at the different photos. So I've got this photo here, which you'll have seen before if you've seen our previous videos. Uh, we actually already made this into a different photo. We, we added a bunch of storm clouds and light and all that kind of stuff. So this is just a photo up on Beachy Head. I really like this location because we've got this little farmhouse here. We've got these storm clouds kind of gathering overhead. But we're going to turn this into a night sky landscape and there's a few ways that we're going to do that there's quite a few bits we're going to do to this to make it work so let's get it going let's first of all the very first thing we're going to do you can see we've just got this one layer here we're going to actually come up here to edit and we're going to go sky replacement now we're actually going to use the sky that we actually use the sky replacement in. it's just the quickest way of actually masking out the sky here so you can see i've just got a random night sky photo that photoshop has built in i'm just going to have that i'm going to click ok it's going to output this to new layers but photoshop has done the hard work of masking out the sky for us so that's fine that's just a quick and easy way of doing that we can then go ahead and bring in our own night sky photo so I'm just going to drag that into Photoshop here and I'm just going to make sure it is the right size. I'm just going to scale that up slightly. There we go. Don't worry about how crazy it looks at the moment. All we're going to do now is you can see in this sky replacement group, we've got the actual sky here and here's the layer mask. That's all we want. We're going to go ahead and click on that layer mask. We're going to hold alt and drag it down onto our new sky down here. And then we can just delete this entire sky replacement group. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go. We've now got our landscape and the night sky. Now, obviously, at the moment, they don't match at all, not even close. So we need to do a bunch of work to, to fix that. So the first thing we're going to go ahead and do, we're going to bring a curves adjustment in. I'm going to drag that beneath the sky, so it's just over the landscape, and I'm going to bring that down in the middle just to sort of immediately darken things a little bit. I don't want to go too mad with it. We're also going to go ahead and make a hue saturation layer Again, I'm going to bring that down beneath the sky and I'm just going to reduce the saturation quite a bit on this landscape. And I might even just bring the lightness down a little bit as well. Uh, immediately, things are starting to look a little bit better. They still look, you know, not, not ideal. So we're going to get there. Don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and make another curves adjustment. This one over the sky. And I'm just going to bring that down. Now I'm, I'm going to press Alt, hold Alt and left click on the line between curves and the sky here. And that is going to now only be affecting that sky. So I can come in here and I can do everything and everything on this curves adjustment is going to only be affecting that sky. So I'm just going to bring the blue level down within the, the curves adjustment. So we've gone into blue here and I'm just making a point in the midtones and I'm just bringing that down because that sky was very, very blue. And you can see just by doing that, if I turn that layer off and then back on, Look how much that matches the landscape. A lot, lot better now. So that's looking a million times better. You can already see that things are matching up really well. Let's go ahead and actually go back to this curves layer, which is just above the landscape. Let's go in here and reduce, let's reduce a little bit of the red. Not too much because it already matches quite well with the sky, but just a little bit, and maybe a little bit of the green as well so that we just bring out a little bit of blue. There we go. Okay, so if I turn that off and back on, that's doing a big job and the hue saturation is doing a big job as well. The next thing I want to do is marry the two parts of this photo together by color grading them in the same way. And the easiest way to do that, let's come down here, another adjustment layer. We're going to go color lookup. Now we're going to go ahead and click load 3D LUT. These are essentially their lookup tables and they're going to affect the colors, the contrast, things like that within the photo. 
But by doing this across the entire photo, so the sky and the landscape, affecting the colours, the contrast, things like that, we're going to kind of marry the two elements together a little bit better because they're going to have an overall look applied to both of them so they'll match really well. So there's a few different ones we could do. We could go ahead and click on Drop Blues. I actually quite like Drop Blues for trying to do this kind of effect because look how much they now look like they might be part of the same thing. We can then bring the opacity down of this to something like 50%. And if I turn that off and then back on, we've kind of desaturated things a little bit, but it, it does feel like they're a bit more married together. Now we could go ahead and add another color lookup. And what I like about this is we can come back and adjust these layers. We can turn them off. We can do all kinds of things. So we're kind of editing as we go, editing by feel, but we can go back and adjust other things as well. A little bit like we did with the curves adjustment and the uh, the reds and the greens and things like that. Now the next 3D LUT I'm going to apply here, I think we should go ahead and try something like Night from Day. Now, obviously at 100%, this is way too strong. But if I bring the opacity down here to something like maybe even 25%, turn that off, turn that back on, it might still be a little bit too strong. But... I think that really, really helps actually with trying to make this kind of marry up. We might then want to bring in another curves adjustment and just bring that exposure up a touch. But one big thing we really do need to do with this photo is darken parts of this landscape. And that's because it's too visible. It's too sharp and bright and stuff like that. And even if you did a really long exposure, I suppose maybe it would, it would look a bit like this, but we just want to probably bring that down a little bit, darken it a little bit. So what we can do, we can do another curves adjustment. And this time, instead of adding a new point and dragging that around, we're actually going to bring this black point down here to the right. Now, don't worry that the photo looks a bit full on right now. We're now going to take this layer mask, the white layer mask on this adjustment, and we're going to press Control i That's going to turn it completely black. Now, of course, with layer mask, anything white is visible on the photo. Anything black is not. So now nothing is visible on the photo from this curves layer. What we could do is bring this brush tool with a white paint. We can paint this on. Now I'm going to use a low flow of about, let's go for 20%, 19% is fine. Do you know what? 20% is even better though. So let's go ahead and just, just sort of paint this on, not too uh, aggressively. I might even just spill out onto that sky a little bit as well. I want to darken that horizon a touch. So here we go. Now, by using a lower flow, we are able to build this up a little bit more than if we were using just 100%. 100% flow would mean we should be painting this on at 100%. But using a 20% flow means I can go back over the same area and build it up. So I like using a lower flow. Now, of course, I think here we may have gone a little bit too far with it. So I might just bring the opacity of the overall curves layer down to something like 70%. But let's turn that off and back on and look how much we've darkened parts of this photo. Now I like the idea of darkening this sky just a little bit at the bottom because I think it marries the whole kind of thing together. I think it doesn't look quite as aggressively different with that horizon. I've just brought the opacity down a little bit again. 55% I think works pretty well. Let's look at the before and after in total. So this is where we started. This was the landscape as it came out from Lightroom. So obviously I've done a bit of an edit on it. And then this is where we're at now. Now, I've got a bit of a brighter area around this farmhouse just because that's how I think I edited the photo. I put a mask over it and I just brightened that area a little bit. I don't think that's the end of the world in this photo. You know, realistically, in terms of how the light would actually fall, it would not look like that. It would be uniformly dark across this landscape. But I don't think it's the end of the world. I'm just going to darken this foreground a little bit by just painting this curves layer on a little bit stronger. So that's building up that that flow like we talked about. And also, I guess maybe the sheep wouldn't be out in the field. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know really anything about the habits of sheep, but I assume they sleep at night. Um, but otherwise, I think this looks actually not too bad at all. Now we might want to go in and just do one kind of final color lookup. Something which I like popping on is something teal, orange, plus contrast. I really like that one. Obviously at 100%, it's really, really full on. But if we bring that down to something like 15%, the before and the after. I think it looks quite good. You might want to leave that off. But I think we've made some pretty good ground on this photo. It might overall, to be honest, be a little bit dark, in which case I might bring a curves layer in and brighten that up. Or I might bring a, uh, a maybe an exposure layer in 
and see how that looks. Let's bring an exposure layer in and just pump that up a little bit just to kind of bring that up. But I think actually it was probably fine as it was. We don't want to go too mad with things. So I really like that. I think that's a nice end result that we've got to. Uh, it doesn't look too unrealistic. It might look a little bit uh, on the greeny blue side. So I might just bring that saturation down a touch overall. So just add a hue saturation layer, bring that saturation down. I might just move the hue over to more of a sort of blue, maybe bring that lightness up a touch maybe. There we go. I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with how that's come out. Again, let's finally look at the before and the after. Now, I would never claim that this was a photo that I took in camera straight away and this is the result, but it's an interesting process to get to in terms of editing and learning kind of what works, especially with a nice guy photo like this, what works, what doesn't, how you can affect things in a certain way, because you'll take from doing something like this, doing an, uh, like a process like this, you'll learn things that you can then apply later on in the future that you might not be aware of now that you want to do, but at some point it can be very useful. So I love doing this kind of thing just to see if I can partly, because if I can, then I can take learnings from this and apply it to other stuff. And also, you know, it's an interesting way of thinking about composition with night sky and stuff like that as well, because I love going out and taking these night sky photos. But of course, generally speaking, I'd much rather take one exposure or I suppose a couple of exposures of the same shot, one for the landscape, one for the sky. Uh, this one, for example, is my favorite shot that I've done so far of a night sky where I, this is actually, two different exposures you've got the sky and then you've got the foreground with the with the two people sat there with the torches which i really really like let me know in the comments though is this something you're interested in do you enjoy doing this kind of thing or is this a complete turn off not a fan let me know in the comments i'd love to know because like i say i find this really interesting but i appreciate it's more going into the digital art space than uh just straight up you know photo manipulation yes but it's not just strictly photo editing i suppose so let me know what you think down in the comments of course don't forget to like and subscribe there's new tutorials all the time new videos every day through to the 24th of december i will of course see you tomorrow but until then as always thanks for watching